In this video, I will present the template, the Regina Sailing template, where on one A4 page, most things, almost everything you need to know about tidal calculation is gathered. The overview, the time frames, the different time zones, the standard ports, the currents, the secondary port calculations, well, the tidal curve, and not to forget the anchoring. So all this is gathered in one template and it's very practical to use it. And if you don't remember the next year when you sail in tidal waters again, well, have a look and take up the template. Maybe you watch this video again for uh, as a memory and then you can use tidal calculations easily when you go to tidal waters again. Let's use our theory we got in the previous video about tidal sailing and apply it here hands on using the Regina sailing template, which makes it so much simpler to navigate in tidal waters. So as an example, we will sail to Belle Isle in Bretagne, a wonderful place, but it's not open to go into the inner harbor <coughs> at every um, height of tide. At any time, you have to do some tidal calculations because this is where you go normally uh, at if you have enough water, but this is how it looks at low water. So this is now photographed uh, when there is low water. There's hardly any water to go any uh, through there at all. But if you do your calculations correctly, you don't have to lie on the sandbank where the boats are here, then it looks like this and it's easy to get in. If you look at a chart um, taken from the reeds or Imre here, um, you can see that we actually have a tidal gate. There are visiting buoys outside in the avant -peur. Um, and you, you can stay there for a short while as well. Uh, but the charm is to sail in the uh, Bazin à Flot, uh, the inner basin there uh, where, where it is blue. So we have the tidal gates. We have to overcome this place here. <clears throat> and this is what I mentioned in the previous uh, video on tidal sailing. This is a green area. So these are drying heights. These are negative depths. So underlined numbers, to me this is not underlined, to me it's a negative sign. It is a negative side uh, depth, so it's actually a height. So we have a water depth here of minus one meter according to chart datum. So what does this mean, hands on? So that means that we actually need one meter of height of tide, one meter of uh, water to wet this drying height. We need a water, we need one meter to get zero depth here. All right. And then we decide that we want another two and a half meters for the boat. My boat has a draft of two meters. And I'd like to have half a meter margin because there can be other influences as well um, or some sanding. So I'd like to have two and a half meters for the boat. And then we need the first meter to actually get uh, to wet in the place, as I call it. Well, we add the motor up and we need a height of tide of three and a half meters. Now, how do we know when we get, uh, when we've got that height of tide of three and a half meters? Well, therefore I've got made these templates. So this is what it's all about. We're looking at the Regina sailing templates here. So let's go and have a look. The template, well, the title template is made up um, it's all, everything is gathered on one page. You don't have to fill out everything. You can fill in the parts that you are interested in, but it gathers everything in one place. So it is built up like that. So up here we have uh, the overview uh, with the time zones. Then below here we have the information for the standard port. We just copy the information from uh, the reads. Then you might want to do some tidal calculations taking the currents into consideration that's here to the right and if you sail to a place which is a secondary port meaning this is a port for which there are no individual data available then you use the secondary port calculation here and i do admit the books don't present them in a very obvious way so it is really more to understand what the books are meaning by what they write than the actual calculation. So I've tried to simplify it here uh, so you can do the secondary port calculation without any anxiety. And then here down on the uh, bottom corner, I have a, um, well, some notes uh, for the tidal curve. How do you use with these notes? Don't use the 
curve that is here because every standard port has its own curve but this is a little um, footnote so to speak how to use them and last but not least because i love anchoring down here in the right bottom corner are the anchoring um, calculations because you need to see that if you anchor or when you anchor that um, when the water is going down uh, it becomes low water it's ebbing that we are not stuck with the keel and touch the ground and if it is flooding or when it is flooding it will flood thereafter then uh, we might have such a water depth that our chain uh, length is not sufficient to anchor safely so this is what this corner is about let me give you some background on the time zones because that is something which is not very um, e easy to understand. Here is a confession of a yacht master uh, written a, as a little article in Yachting Monthly and I think that is so nice if you zoom in here read it. I may brag at being a long-standing ROI yacht master so he should know it but I must finally confess to always having a little struggle with interpreting the French title information in the Channel Almanac. Surely, surely I am not alone. Um, the almanac doesn't appear to be clear which time is being used and uh, so it doesn't really clarify the situation so does that clarify the almanac time is everyone now clear my crew were confused and clearly so was i we just missed the lock opening and needed to wait for three and a half hours so you're not alone if you don't understand the time zones and that's why i have to put that on the top of my template and it's not very straightforward either. So here is one um, definition I found, and that's maybe the easiest thing. It has a time zone A, B, Z, D, E, and so on. So we in Europe are blue. We are in the time zone A. And that's why, actually, if you didn't know that, it's called the Zulu time. UTC is called Zulu because Zulu, Z, is uh, actually the green ones here in England and uh, Portugal. You have Zulu time, Greenwich Mean Time, UTC. It's all more or less uh, the same and it corresponds to British uh, winter time. And then you can add summer time onto it, which makes it even more complicated. Okay, but in which way should you calculate plus or minus? Well, I found another picture here. So here we have zero, that is Zulu time, that is UTC, that is Greenwich Mean Time, that's United Kingdom. And then it says plus one for uh, France and Germany and the rest of Europe here plus one all right plus one whatever that means if you have to add or subtract or something and then you have another chart if you look down here then suddenly this a time zone a is called minus one so is it now plus one or minus one and which way should you calculate and then you have the summer time on top of it it's really not so easy so in my template on the top here you can start off easily to um, uh, write here 12th of june 2022 well that's easy but now comes the time and first you uh, make a little cross on your local time well that should not be such a difficult thing uh, to do because you know that if you are in utc or if you are in um, central european time so utc is really um, used in uh, great britain uh, ireland and portugal and if you are in the rest of europe uh, apart from finland and some parts of the mediterranean then it is uh, central european time so you can make a cross there if you are in uh, france or in england so to speak and then you make another cross if you're in winter and summer and you should know if you're in winter and or summer if summer time and then i've given a little hint here times in read what does read do well reads always uses the local winter time for instance for dover it is utc in winter and for brest it is central european time in winter so if you look here in the reads it says standard time this is for brest standard time ut minus one subtract one hour for ut for french summertime add one hour in non-shaded areas who can understand that this is really not so easy to understand and that's why i have made it much simpler i have said like this on the right side of my template i have uh, written that uk and portugal in winter that is ut 
for instance, Dover in Reeds. And then you add an hour to get to UK or Portuguese summertime. That is called BST, British summertime. And British summertime is the same thing as European wintertime, which the Reeds calls UT minus one. Just accept that European wintertime is called UT minus one. It's a name. That's how I see it. Then you add yet another hour to get to European summertime. And with that little list there, you can easily then compare your European time with the Reeds times and see how much you need to go backwards or forwards in the time. So, for instance, in this example, you are in Brest, you are in Central European time in summer. So that is the lowest red line, European summertime. In order to go back to Brest in winter, you subtract one hour to get to the middle part. And to get to Dover in winter, you have to subtract yet another hour. So that is very useful to get some overview of the time where we are. Then we want to have an overview of if it is uh, spring or neap or where are we in the days. So here you can see that uh, the 8th of uh, June is a blue day. It's a Wednesday on the top left there in the reeds. That is a blue day. That's a neap day. And we are on the 12th. So that's 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th. That's four days towards spring. And it's always approximately a week between Neap and spring. So then you have 13th, 14th, 15th, and which you don't see the 16th actually is a red day. Um, that is spring. So we are actually quite in the middle, a uh, bit closer to spring than Neap, but very closer. So just make a line here. So then you have the overview to see that you are approximately between Neap and spring. Good, isn't it? So let's go further down and look at the standard ports. The standard ports, in, in um, uh, which standard port should we use? Well, we look here in our reads uh, of Le Palais, which is the harbor that we are talking about in uh, Belle Isle. And the standard port is Brest. All right, well, that's good. We'll just write Brest here. And then it is a question of just copying these uh, numbers. So everything, every time you have a little star there on my template, it means don't think, just copy from the reads. So here we uh, look at the reads for Brest and zoom in here for the 12th. And these figures which are written there, just copy them. So at 2.45 we have 6.3 meters, at 9.07 we have 1.7 meters, at 15.12 we have 6.5 meters, we're at 21.30 hours we have 1.5 meters of water on top of lowest astronomic tide. These meters are the height of tide in question. And what times are these? What time zones? Well, you, they are always in the local winter time. So that means that 2.42 is local French winter time. Keep these figures for now because we are not allowed, we should not change these figures yet. We do that in the very end to get the local summer time. But right now, copy them because the book works with these figures. Yes, so that is how it is. And um, we have um, two high waters. Can you see that? Uh, we can circle the times of high water here because these are good to know um, uh, because the curve, the tidal curve, uses this um, uh, these times. So that's why it says circle high water times and high water uh, heights. I haven't circled the heights here in this example, but you could do that. So which one are you interested in? Well, I'm not very keen on being very early bird. So that's why I would arrive sometime around 1512. And then we have six and a half meters. So that's great. Now let's look at uh, the differences between the high water and low water because they influence the current. The bigger the difference between high water and low water, the bigger, the stronger the current. And the difference between high water and low water, that is called range. So you take these 6.3 meters and the 1.7 meters in the morning 
and look at the difference it's 4.6 meters and uh, during midday you have a difference at 4.8 meters and then in the afternoon you have a difference of 5.0 meters so you can see that the difference the range increases surprised no because we are going towards spring and the more spring we go the more high is the high water and the more low is the low water so the difference increases the range increases so that corresponds again to our overview now let's see that this is breast right and we want to know for the times for bell ill so the, it's it's not exactly placed by breast but it's close to breast because standard ports and secondary ports are always close to each other the standard ports like the mother and the uh, secondary ports are all the children around so remember this picture from the first video or the video before that this is the time of high water at spring so you can see how this flows the water at 240 um, there in Cap San Vicente in the southwest corner of Portugal that is when they have high water there then at 310 in Lisbon 320 in Vigo in 330 in La Coruña 430 in Brest 5 o'clock in the English Channel and so on that is explained in the video before now where is Brest and Belil? So uh, Belil is here and Brest is there. So it goes this curve. So if you if you see this and if you have the feeling for it already, you can see very clearly. So the high water should be a little bit earlier at Belil than in Brest. Well, let's see if that is valid, if that is printed in the reads. But we can already know that it's a bit earlier. So we have 15, 12 um, here at Brest and six and a half meters so um then at uh Bel -Ile it should be a bit earlier than 15 12 at least that's our guess and then we have uh the low water that follows uh, one and a half meters that's also a question should you have the consider the height of low water uh, after or before that uh, six and a half meters because you could also consider that you should look at 1.7 meters and if you're really precise, it depends on if you intend to arrive slightly before 1512 or after 1512. So if you arrive after high water, then you should use, like I have here, the height of tide for the next low water. If you intend to arrive sometime between 9 and 15 o'clock, then you use the 1.7 meters. But 1.5, 1.7, which shouldn't be that precise anyway, because we need some margin, don't we? So take something that you think is the closest to where you are going. These three things we need for because the tidal curve is designed for the time of high water, the height of high water, and the height of low water. These three figures, they are worth gold. These go down here. So here comes the secondary port calculation for the tidal curve. So we go into that intermediate step, which we could jump over if we were sailing into Brest. But we now are going to Belil, so we need to have this intermediate step of secondary port calculation or write secondary port calculation. That sounds horrible and it looks even a bit complicated. The complicated part is really to read what they mean, the authors of the book. Write the secondary port here, Le Palais Belle-Ile, that's where we want to go. And we have the time of high water, the height of uh, high water and the height of low water. These are the three parts which are gold worth. And they, they come here in the middle because they are so important. The time of high water and the heights of high water and low water and these three figures that's the ones that we have to amend these are the three that need to be tweaked a little bit because we are not at Brest we are in Le Palais and here you can see again in Le Palais so here a difference in, in the time of high water so let's start off looking at the time of high water next to it to the right there is the times of low water we don't even need that so you could actually uh, disregard from the times of low water so what does it say well start off by just following the asterisk the star there it says uh, in my template on the very top left it says high water brackets time star that means star just read the reads so copy it so copy these six figures 
All right, for some reason it says 00, 06, 12, 1800, okay. Then differences to Le Palais, it says 0, 0, 0, 005 and minus 0025. 0, That's what we have to understand what this means. All right, I'll come back to that. Now, next thing, now let's look at the heights of high water. So never mind this mean high water spring and mean high water um, neap, as it says there. This is just an approximation. Just take the figures there. And again, it has the heights in meters on my template. Star, high water, star. Star means just copy what it says there. Okay, we copy. 7, 5.5, minus 0, 1.8, minus 1.4. And exactly the equivalent we do then here for the low water, we write that nicely, just copy it, and then we are done. So, now comes the thinking. What are we thinking about? All right. What you need to understand is what they want to tell us. And as it says there um, vertically, uh, in, in, in brownish red there, it says in little letters, so you can remember, if at st p, that means if at standard port. So listen to this. What it means is if the high water at standard port, meaning breast, is at 0000, zero, zero, zero so midnight, the correction is, and then you go down, minus 0, zero, zero, 0005. That means minus zero, zero hours and zero, 05 minutes. So if the high water is at midnight in Le Palais, it is five minutes earlier. Surprise? No, it should be earlier. But it, the, how much earlier differs a little bit if it is at midnight or if the uh, height of, uh, if the high water at Brest is at six o'clock. Because if it is at 6 o'clock, 0600, then you go down and see the correction. It says minus 0025. That means if the time of high water is 6 o'clock in Brest, it is 25 minutes earlier in Belil. And if the time of high water is at 12 o'clock again, well, it's 5 minutes earlier. And if it's 18 hours it is 25 minutes before. You look at when it is high water in Brest. And we know that because it says 15, 12 in the middle there. So I put that in the middle because it is somewhere in the middle. It is somewhere between these figures. So either it is between midnight and 6, or it is between 6 and 12, or it is between 12 and 1800, or it is between 1800 and midnight. So when is 1512? Well, it is clearly between 12 o'clock and 18 o'clock. So it is somewhere in between there, between 12 and 1800. So the corrections should be somewhere between 5 minutes earlier and 25 minutes earlier. Now, you can draw crocodiles and all sorts of things, or you can interpolate and you do your uh, use your calculator. I think it is completely enough to do it by eyeball because the differences aren't so huge. So it's between five minutes and 25 minutes earlier. So look at this. 1512 is rather in the middle of 12 and 1800 could be a little bit more to the left, a little bit more to the right. But in this case, by coincidence, it is 1512. It's just after the middle. So that means that the correction here should be just after the middle, between five minutes early and 25 minutes early. So now comes the million dollar question, and that is what it's all about. So if we want to find the middle between five minutes earlier and 25 minutes earlier, it is 15 minutes earlier. That is the thing. Never mind by the minute. It doesn't have to be. If it's 10 or 20, it doesn't matter because we are not that precise anyway and the tide isn't that precise. Um, it is just hands-on. You, all you have to know that you are somewhere between 5 and 25 minutes earlier 
and if the high time of high water is at 15 o'clock it's in the middle so it's 15 minutes earlier all right so now we know how much earlier it is in Belil. okay now at standard port what was it again in standard port 1512 so copy that it says there in this next line and it even has an arrow that you should just copy that 1512 and then now we add the summertime summertime shall we add one hour question mark yes we are in summer so add one summer time here we are and then we add it all together and it's approximately 1600. so we know the height of uh, the, the the time of high water is 1600 hours on that day in french local summertime the same applies for the height of high water because we need all three figures for our tidal curve so the height of high water well the correction reads like this if at the standard port the height of high water at uh, is seven meters then at belil it's 1.8 meters less if the height of high water um, at high water here is 5.5 meters it is 1.4 meters less now the height of high water is six and a half meters so you can see that it is somewhere in between seven meters and five and a half meters and then you have to correct if it's seven meters you deduct 1.8 meters if it's five and a half meters it's 1.4 it's six and a half so it's somewhere in the middle so i call it 1.6 um, meters less all right so how much was it well we copy it from the at the standard pole we copy it from above it's six and a half meters we calculate it so the high water height is 4.9 meters in belil so while the times weren't so considerable, the heights were actually. So that's good to know. So don't just go for the six and a half meters from um, Brest because it's 1.6 meters less and that's considerable. The height of low water is just the same. At 2.7 meters, if it had been 2.7 meters at Brest, in Belil it's 0 0.7 meters less. If at Brest it had been 1.1 meters then it's 0 0.3 meters less now we copied the low water height as 1.5 meters so it's in between 2.7 and 1.1 meter maybe a bit closer to the 1.1 meter don't you think so choosing between 0 0.3 and 0 0.7 and something in between there i would personally go a little bit closer to the uh, right correction and um, actually deduct 0 0.4 meters deduct from what well deduct from the 1.5 meters so the low water uh, height of tide is 1.1 meter perfect so now we have these three figures these are so important gold worth these three little things time of high water height of high water and height of low water now not for breast only but also for Le Palais Belle-Ile. These three go down, go down, further down, into my um, template for the tidal curve. And here it says sample only, use from read. So don't use um, uh, this one here because this is just a sample from somewhere. But it gives you the point where you should put it. So the do you see the arrows so the time of high water goes in the box uh, in the middle there and the height of high water you draw on the top line in uh, purple and the height of low water goes on the bottom line in orange so let's now do this for breast remembering 16 hours 4.9 meters and 1.1 meter so let's look in reads let's look up breast here is breast and now we need these little three little things always the same things time of high water height of high water and height of low water which are printed for breast because it's a standard port and we had to do some corrections for the secondary port for bell ill now write them down so time of high water well they goes into this box here 1600 remember and when we have 1600 it's easy to just write the corresponding hours 
before and after. It should be about five, six hours before and six hours after. That's one period from low water to high water to low water. This is this uh, tidal curve. All right, height of high water. Well, if you look at my little thing, it goes here. Remember, 4.9 meters. And height of low water, well, it goes down here, 1.1 meter. It's the same sky scale on the top and the bottom, by the way. And now you just take a ruler and connect these two, and here you have the tidal curve. So this is what a lot of tidal sailors do first thing in the morning after the cup of tea or the first cup of coffee. So this tidal curve is prepared for Belil. You use the tidal curve for breast because they're very similar, but it's for Belil because it's the Belil numbers for the 12th of June. So how do you read it? Well, if you, for instance, want to know the height of tide at 12.30, well, you go up here, left, and up there, and read off 2.6 meters. So at um, 12.30, you have a... Uh, height of tide of 2.6 meters. It's not enough, as you remember. We needed 3.5 meters, but at least we know how much it is. There are, if you look at 12.30 and you go up to that tidal curve, you can see that there's a red line and it is a blue dotted line. And to the right top, it explains what it means. The red is being used if you are at spring and the blue dotted line is used when you are at neap. So it differs very slightly here between 11 o'clock and uh, 13 o'clock, depending on uh, if it's neap or spring. So if you're really precise, since on the very overview on the very top, you can see that we are between spring and neap. So you go somewhere um, and turn left uh, at the <laughs> curve between the red and the blue dotted line. But they are very close in this case. Yes. But now the question is, we need to have the three and a half meters height of tide, all right, in order to get in there. So when do we have three and a half meters height of tide? We do it just backwards. So we'll pick three and a half meters, that's what we want, on the top or bottom, go down to that line and see at this time we have uh, three and a half meters. At 1330 we have um, three and a half meters height of tide and that's what we needed to get into Belil. After 13.30, the uh, tidal curve increases, it goes uphill. So that means that we will get more and more water. Oh, thank you, that's what we need. And then at 1600, it reaches its top, that's called high water, and then it goes down again. And we reach three and a half meters a second time here at 18.30. So this is the area we can go. Here we have more than three and a half meters height of tide, and that is sometime between 1330 and 1830. Cool, isn't it? So let's see how it looks when you sail into Belle Ile. Here we sail into Belle Ile. It's one of the most beautiful and rewarding ones, and you can see we are not the only one doing the calculations correctly. We just sail into here. Isn't this beautiful? I really like sailing into Belil. And I like it so much because it's such a good example of um, a tidal gate uh, that I have yet more videos about it on my website reginasailing.com. And if you're German uh, speaking, you can read it also about uh, tidal curves and uh, calculations in my book Praxis Guide Fahrten Segeln. But uh, I want to continue here to uh, discuss the question about apps. Why can't we just use apps? Well, they do work well, but I think there is some buts. Um, first of all, it's very nice to do it by hand and, and it's fun, uh, good for redundancy. But there are other uh, buts. It's a discrepancy. I mean, computer uh, models versus man-made. So the, the apps have computer models where they calculate where uh, how it should be. And in some complicated uh, places, uh, in the North Sea especially, um, there actually a human being has sat and measured and compared it over many, many days and done a lot of 
manual work. And that is uh, brought into the information, the very valuable information in the reads. That is man-made. So it's a bit not only beautiful, but it's more accurate than a computer which just takes islands and things in the way into considerations. And sometimes there are even computer bugs. I, Well, hopefully they decrease, but um, I have used apps for many, many years and uh, sometimes the apps have forgotten the summertime or they even have, uh, uh, well, mixed up high water and low water. It's, it's, it's really incredible because the computer engineers, they sit somewhere um, and, and program this and they have no feel for if it um, makes sense that it's high water in one harbor and at the same time it's low water in the neighboring harbor. Of course it doesn't work. But I have reported many of these bugs and they have been uh, resolved and more and more are being resolved. But the summertime issue is uh, still an issue and you really have to know on your own phone what time have, um, have you put in there. So what times are given on the app? Are they in UTC or on, on, on your uh, phone's time zone? Not always easy to see. So don't count on the last centimeter. Uh, that's what I would say. And then many uh, apps are often uh, only valid for the next few days. So if you do a passage plan for uh, next week or something, you can't use the um, many apps. But if you pay, for instance, for the Imraid uh, Tides Planner, which I very much like. It costs five euros per country and five years per year. And then you can go um, into each year you have purchased, so to speak. So let's look at the example of uh, Belil on that day. So I click on this uh, app here, open it up. Uh, all these yellow points are places you can look at. Here's Belil. So I click on that one. Le Palais. And here you can then decide which day it's 12th of October. So I go to June, 12th of June. Because I've paid for it, I can go there. And now I can scroll forward and backward and see what times we have. And when do we have three and a half meters? Well, at here, 11, 11, 11, 10, it says. And here again at 16, 30. So if you do that in, uh, that is UT times. So that is what I mean. 11, 10, you have to consider that on my app, uh, how I have uh, put up the setting, the times given in the Imray Tide Planner are in UTC. So if it says 11.10, it means French local summertime. 13.10, you have to add two hours. If you look at the templates all the way to the top right, you can see that going from UTC to French summertimes, you add two hours. So it's 13.10. And then again, 1830. And our handmade thing through the reads was 1330 and 1830. So it differs a little bit. The 1830 does not differ, but the um, 1310 contra 1330 differs by 20 minutes. That's why I say it is not so accurate anyway. So don't do it by the last minute. But if I believe something, I actually believe the reads more than the app. But it works and I do use it and I like it, especially the Imre Tide Planet, but also Time Zero has a built-in tidal calculation um, uh, app and uh, others have certainly as well. So don't count on the last centimeter. So that is um, very important because all we have been speaking about here is tidal heights. So that's heights that are depending on the tides. And tides is the moon and sun as shown in the previous video. But you have some other currents and heights as well. So for instance, in the Baltic, in the Baltic, it rains a lot. If you haven't discovered sail there, you will notice that it rains a lot. So it rains much more than it evaporates. So we always have a current going northbound here through the Sound, the Öresund, and then along the Hallandskusten north to Jöteborg and then towards Norway. Um, and north of Gothenburg, it actually also uh, connects with the Gulf Stream there, which does a detour around Skagen. So you have about a current constantly northbound there. And then you can have northeasterly winds, of course. So if you have uh, northeasterly winds, they push a lot of water because winds also um, do currents and um, uh, push water. So you have a high water in um, here in the Lübecker Bucht in, in, in Germany. And what then happens maybe that is that we get a gale or something from southwest. It blows in the opposite direction. And then water is being pushed 
towards Finland. So then Finland gets the high water and Germany gets the low water. And then, of course, we have the Gulf Stream. As I said, it always goes here and it adds up to the uh, currents. And as you can see here uh, around Skagen and the north tip of Denmark, it do does a little detour in the Skagerrak and um, adds up to this current from the um, too much rain in the in the Baltic. Yes. And then you have the Azorian High and the low over the peninsula uh, of the Iberian Peninsula over Madrid. So these two add together and always have a northwesterly trade winds here. And they push the water um, southbound. That's why you always have a current about of half knot to one knot going southbound here. Uh, it, and it needs to fill up all that water which is missing in Galicia in the northwestern corner. That's why it's so cold the water there, because the water comes from very deep uh, Atlantic waters. But it's very fresh, so that's why you have a lot of mussels being grown and other wonderful things you can eat in Galicia. But that's not the theme here. That is just to show that there are currents also depending on the wind. <clears throat> and uh, then you have the Mediterranean. It's hot. It's getting hotter and hotter. It's very hot right now. And uh, the water evaporates. So it's missing water in the Mediterranean. The only way that more water can come in is through the uh, Gibraltar Sound. So there's always a constant current into the Mediterranean to replace that water. So why? what do you have to remember? Well, if you have a wind over uh, 5 before, um, it can actually give you a uh, height of tide that no, it's not height of tide it, it's a water height that differs uh, up to a meter so that's a lot like in the Baltic as I said and the air pressure I haven't spoken about the air pressure the air pressure is also considerable air is heavy so if you have high pressure then the heavy air is so heavy that it pushes away the water so you have less water um, uh, when you have a high pressure than if you have a low pressure so it's about approximately one centimeter per hectopascal and that's a lot so for instance if you have a low of 990 hectopascal and then afterwards you get a high of 1030 hectopascal that's 0.4 meters and i have also had that experience sailing in the archipelago sailing out uh, when it was still raining having a great week with sunshine a big high pressure building up and when i sailed through the same sound on my way back to Stockholm, I went to ground 0.4 meters in 40 hectopascal. And last but not least, you have waves and swell. That means that the waves and swell, they push you up and down uh, all the time. And that means that um, you should also consider the swell and have some margin. So all on top of this, you have the tides. So do your tidal calculations and then have some margin. That's what I say. I look a little bit on the wind and the air pressure.